more than likely, when I post this message, I'll post it pretty close to the one that I recently uploaded regarding a vision of a hellion in hell and what happened. There are times when I speak and words may come across as being harsh and potentially even unloving. But there are times, by the Spirit of God, you realize that some individuals will not repent. A great example is the devil himself. Even after being bound in chains for a thousand years, he still comes out and rebels against God. There are people they will refuse to repent. I've spoken about the Lord removing the grace from people to repent. But arguably, that is not always the case. Sometimes people, like an astronaut, astronaut on a spacewalk, that voluntarily cuts the tether and floats away. That is how some people have become. They untethered themselves from the Lord. They refused to repent. They are individuals who refused to repent. No amount of prayers. The goodness of God will not lead them unto repentance. And sometimes God's judgment, at least here on earth, But I just want to say this. Let's go to the Bible. I'm going to start from Revelation 7. Let's start verse 9. All the way through Revelation chapter 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation and all tribes and people and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes, and palm branches were in their hands. And they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sits on a throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Then came one of the el then one of the elders answered me, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they? And where have they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God, and they serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will spread His tabernacle over them. They will hunger no longer, nor thirst any more, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of the water of life. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So it speaks about those, one of the elders, who have come out of the great tribulation. In the book of Judges, people start doing what they thought was right in their own eyes. They would stray away from the Lord. The Lord would bring up an oppressor, and then they'd cry out to the Lord. They'd come back to Yahweh, but then they'd stray away again. The goodness of God leads unto repentance. Oppression will also lead unto repentance. So I had a great tribulation. 
people will come to the Lord. That's great news. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and the seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him, so that he might add to it the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and the sounds and flashes of lightning and earthquake. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first sounded and there came hail and fire mixed with blood. Hmm. And they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up. Oh gosh. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. So let's talk about climate change. We see at the very end, still trees, grass. Let's continue. The second angel sounded. And something like a great mountain burned with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of waters. The name of the star is called wormwood and a third of the waters became wormwood and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter so people being on earth so some came out of great tribulation others remained are they repentant the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them would be darkened, and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night the same way. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, an eagle flying, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth, because the remaining, the remaining blasts of the trumpet and the three angels who are about to sound. This reminds me of Numbers 22 with Balaam. The Lord opened his donkey's mouth so the donkey could speak. So again, then I looked and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet and of the three angels who are about to sound. That's prophesying. Some people say, oh, the Lord doesn't need prophets because he has his words. And even though these things are in scriptures, still going to have an eagle on this day saying these things, prophesying, warning people of things to come. Hmm. Chapter 9. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth, and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. He opened the bottomless pit, and smoke went up out of the pit, like the smoke of a great furnace, and the smoke of the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and the power was given them as the power of the earth, or question as the scorpions of the earth. They were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, 
nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Certainly, this would cause people to cry out to the Lord to help them. And they were not permitted to kill anyone, but to torment for five months. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. Certainly, this would cause people like everyone on earth to cry out to the Lord in repentance. And in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die and death flees from them. Death is like, why are you calling out to me? I have my own problems. Haven't you read Revelation 20? Hmm. The appearance of the locusts, by the way, that's the significance of this, or part of the significance of this painting on the cover of Untrial to Test My Faith. The appearance of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle, and on their heads appeared to be crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were like the teeth of lions. They had breastplate like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots, of many horses rushing to battle. They have tails like scorpions and stings, and in their tails is their power to hurt men for five months. They have a king over them, the king or the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon. And in the Greek, he has a name Apollyon. The first woe is past. Behold, Two woes are still coming after these things. Hmm. I was just reminded. This is kind of like Pharaoh. The Pharaoh of Egypt during Moses' time. Judgment was coming down upon him. Hmm. What did it take for him to repent? Begin verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. One sing to the sixth angel, sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who were bound at the great river Euphrates. Well, they've been bound for a long time. Hmm. And the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and the day and the month and year were released so that they would kill a third of mankind. So the locusts were not allowed to kill, but to torment. Would those torments cause people to cry out to the Lord? But now comes death. The number of the armies of the horsemen were 200 million, and I heard the number of them. And this is how I saw in the vision the horses and those who sat on them. The riders had breastplates, the color of fire and of hyacinth and of brimstone, and the heads of the horses are like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths proceed fire and smoke and brimstone. A third of mankind was killed by these three plagues, and by the fire and the smoke of the brimstone which proceeded out of their mouths. Certainly, this should have people calling out to God for mercy. Verse 19. For the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents and have heads, and with them they do harm. And now for verse 20. Something very profound. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues 
did not repent of the works of their hands so as to not worship demons and the idols of gold and of silver and of brass and of stone and of wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk. When the Lord is doing a number on Pharaoh and his gods, did they repent? Was it 1 Samuel 6 when the Philistines had captured the Ark of God and they realized that because they had the Ark, all kind of stuff was happening? They put in the house of Dagon, Dagon fell on his face twice. People were getting sick, people died. Their diviners told them to return the Ark and how to do it because it was the hand of God against them. But did they repent? So here it is people facing all kind of evil harsh judgment here on the earth and still refusing to repent so again back in verse 20 the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands so as not to worship demons any other god besides Yahweh of course his son the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is a demon, a devil. And the idols of gold and, uh, and of silver and of brass and of stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries nor of their immorality, nor of their thefts. So again, there are times when I deliver messages and they sound harsh. It may be like, if you pray enough, they will change. In Luke 16, when Jesus told a parable about Lazarus and a rich man, about how Lazarus died and was taken to Abraham's bosom but a rich man woke up in torments in hell and he was interceding to include asking Abraham to send Lazarus to speak to his surviving family and Abraham was saying that or said about they have the prophets they have Moses and the prophets And even if someone were to, were to return from the dead, that if they wouldn't believe them, that even if someone were, were to return from the dead, they wouldn't believe them either. So here you see people refusing to repent of their idolatry. Lowercase, Judas, that could not save them from God's wrath. Refusing to repent of their witchcrafts. There are people on this earth today God has given them so many opportunities to repent and they have refused. Yes, there are people who the Lord has handed over to a reprobate mind. But arguably, some people have cut themselves off from the living God. And it's not like He didn't try to help them. It's not like He didn't try to get them to repent. They simply refused. They wanted no parts of God. The goodness of God does lead to repentance. But some people, whether you believe it or not, they love evil. When the Lord confronted King Ahab, he at least donned sackcloth and ashes. Jezebel, ah, uh, no. Some people are hardened, hardened to the Lord. They're sold out to the devil. They love evil. They will not repent. Some people, God didn't cut them off. They cut off God. <laughs>